Hello everyone, welcome to Dark Fae Tarot. Welcome back to those who already know me and welcome to new subscribers. You're joining me on the end of a very gloomy day in Brussels. So without further ado, let me just jump straight in. And that is a topic that I wanted to share and it might be part of a wider theme that I'm be covering. And so the theme is solitary tarot and doing tarot for yourself. And today I want to zone in on a practice that I've been doing for a while, and that is called the Oracle for the Week Ahead, or the Oracle Pool for the Week Ahead. And, um, and this is something that I do on a Sunday evening. It's really a core part of my practice, and it, there's something about it that's very special. For me, a Sunday has been kind of like it can hold many connotations with different people. I don't want to go into that so much, but it's more kind of like preparing for the week ahead and Monday to Friday and all the kind of like ups and downs where life comes in and it's so easy to be off center. So I do this practice on a Sunday evening, but of course it might work for everyone else or someone else at another time. And it's just been a really good way for me to just have a moment. So. I kind of like sit with some decks, which I'm going to show you, and um, and do a, a little tarot pull for myself, and then just some of the things that kind of like have helped me and what I've got out of it. So the decks I'm using this spring, because it is, a, it is a, it's a dark spring here this year, but the decks that I'm using, which have really been a, a good way for me to see kind of like, you know, the themes and what's emerging for the week ahead, is for, for this spring, I've been using the Spirit Animal Oracle by Colette Baron reed and I've been pairing that with the Muse Tarot. So let me show you how that works and how I do things. So first of all, for me, this is really kind of like, again, going back to the title, I call it Oracle for the Week Ahead. And I like using that word because I always feel that the word Oracle is always kind of like, you know, the energies to come, what I need to look out for. And the tarot in this is more kind of like the, the, the slightly finer detail. It's almost as if the tarot is more of the clarifier or the more the detailed nuance and the oracle is the big theme. And the reason I do it that way is because this is a pull for the week ahead. So it's kind of like a more larger energy and underlying energy. And I believe this can work whether or not you're going to be doing further readings for yourself in the week ahead, a daily pull, for example, or whether or not this is it. I think that this, um, what I do on a Sunday for me, really works uh, overall, whether or not I'm pulling a card every day or not. So usually I get my deck. This is the beautiful backs of this deck. Um, and you can use any oracle. You can even use a tarot deck that you see more as an oracle, but basically anything that has a large, broad theme. Um, and I'm gonna be showing that as well. Um, that is key for it. So for me, I use an, an oracle deck. And on top of that, I personally prefer for this specific um, pull to use an oracle deck, which cards which have a very, very large size because they become a focal point and, um, and they kind of like become this, this reminder as I go through the week of an underlying energy that I feel that spirit has drawn me to. If you don't believe in spirit, that's fine too, however you wanna believe it, but it's kind of like the underlying energy of what I've been drawn to. So let me just randomly pull a card for this. And what we have here is, what do I have here? Moth spirit surrender now. And what I usually do is I just pull a card and I go into the guidebook. And the guidebook for this, so that's page 39. So just to mention before I forget, this is the Spirit Animal Oracle. It is by Colette Baron Reed, artwork by Jenna Della Grottaglia, uh, published by Hay House. So I go into that and I look at the underlying messages. Now I'm not going to read out the whole guidebook meaning. Um, because it might be a bit much, but I think that you, just to give you an underlying flavor, it says for Moth Spirit, it says, um, Oracle messages, uh, Moth Spirit asks, what is it guiding you right now? Are you in alignment with spirit or pursuing something or someone with so much tenacity that it has become a compulsion or addiction? Are you so intoxicated by potential relationship or opportunity that you can't think straight? Hard work and dedication are virtues and love, of course, is a beautiful thing. However... Let me just get to the next page. It then says, when moth spirit appears, it is time to consider if you have 
gone over the edge in a relentless pursuit. So when it talks about workaholism, whether it's eating or spending or something, but this kind of like is a very interesting thing because this is a jumping off point. So what I would usually do is I would pull the card. I kind of like go into the guidebook meaning. I sometimes also read the reversal because this particular deck comes with, a uh, guidebook comes with reversals as well. And I pull kind of like, what are the key things that are standing out for me? I also look at the animal energy. And of course, you know, here we have moth spirit. So that's kind of like, you know, being drawn to a flame, the, the need to be near that flame. And then of course the flame is very dangerous for a moth and you know, many moths, you know, it will kill them basically. So it's kind of like being drawn to something so strong and yet it could be our downfall. And so what I do is I then, after I've done the, the pull for the week ahead, is I get my notebook and I'm just gonna try and find, oh, can I find an oracle for the week ahead? I'm just trying to find one to show you. Oh, that was something I want. And do I have one here? And what I do, and this is my normal, this is my normal tarot uh, journal, so tarot record keeping space, so that's why it's a little bit, here, here's one, okay. So here is for February 2023, and I need to complete that picture, <laughs> that little doodle there. But basically what I do is I had, yeah, this was another deck that I was using, but basically I had the toad. So I write a little bit about what I got from it, and then I write underneath kind of like, you know, where do I wanna go? As this was like February 2023, so of course the, progr the, the practice has progressed since then. But that's something that I do a bit of journaling about. Let me see if I can find a more recent one. I think I've got one. Here it is at the back. I do that and then here it is, Oracle for the week ahead. And so you'll see here, there's a bit less here, but I just do a quick set of notes of what I feel is to come. And after I've done that, I kind of like sit there and think, is there a fine detail to this that, I, that Spirit wants me to know basically? And that's when I get my tarot deck. And give that a bit of a shuffle and let's see what we get as well to go with that. And I'm using the Muse Tarot because I think that they work beautifully together. And for me, that aesthetic flow really does matter. It doesn't have to. For some people, they need the juxtaposition of two very different designed or there's no, no harmony between the aesthetics, but for me, it helps. And in this case, for me, it's been color that has really helped pull these two together. So what do I have here? It says Knight of Emotions. So here you go. So here we have Knight of Emotions, which in the Muse Tarot, it's, it's traditionally, sorry, it's the Knight of Cups. And so if we go into the guidebook by, so this is the Muse Tarot by Chris Ann and another Hay House publication. And if I find here, the Knight of Emotions, let me find that, which is Knight of Cups in traditional tarot. Yes, we have a romantic, oh, no, wrong card, sorry. Here it is. And I've got romantic heart, dating, new love, a happy flirtation, wearing your heart on your sleeve, loving the idea of being in love, the thrill of the chase, going for it, the buzz of the fresh and new. And you can just see now how the messages are really aligning. This is really bringing together might be chasing something that might not be so healthy. And so, you know, there's a lot more here in Chris Ann's deck as well, um, in her guidebook, sorry. She's got journal prompts, she's got a verse for somebody to think about. But I really love that. I really love how they just come together. I can put it this way around as well and they can look so beautiful. I really love how they just have this synchronicity in terms of messages. And I usually will put this on my my kind of like shrine area so if you have an altar that's very similar it's kind of like a space a focal point in your home we can just sit and and have a moment or something that you can look at and and just know where you're focusing so i will put that in my home um in my shrine area which is what i have and it's just a good kind of like thing uh, sorry a good kind of set of images for me to remind myself what was oracle's guiding message sorry sirens behind me now let me go let them go past what was oracle's guiding message for the week ahead and interestingly i may look at my schedule and not even know what it's referring to but as the week unfolds it might tap tap into it 
So let me go into how this practice has really borne out because it might look a bit, it might look a little bit, um, kind of like still kind of like, okay, so how does that really play out? What it does is it gives me a moment of gentleness because now I'm feeling a little bit more spiritually prepared for the week ahead. So before kind of like commitments, appointments, diary, clients, um, professional work, um, anything else that I'm doing in terms of consultations, before all of that comes in, I've had a moment to sit and just have a moment to myself going, okay, what, what, how can I regroup myself? That's, that's the word I'm looking for. So it's a bit similar because I do, I do also my professional schedule for the week ahead and personal on a Sunday evening. So that's why then this practice kind of like follows it. So I do that. What I do is just one page of writing. It might be that you want to do more writing. So I do have a separate journal where sometimes I could do this pull and then I go into the evening and I'm making dinner and all of a sudden more comes to my head and then I just write that in a separate journal. You might want to do it all in one journal, whatever works for you. And, um, and then the other thing I find for me that's really helped me in this week ahead, which I think is very specific, is I've used animal energy um, it could be a fae energy, it could be a god or a goddess energy. I find those are particularly potent because it's kind of like a companion walking with me. So I don't feel alone. I feel like I am, I have something with me, a spirit guide that's coming with me on this week ahead. So that's a big part of it for me. And the other thing is, is that I will change the decks according to seasons. So this is more kind of like the spring version. There will be something that I'll be doing in the summer and I'll change out the decks again. It could be you want to keep changing out the decks every week, whatever works for you. But for me, it's nice to have a constant theme throughout the season because that allows me also to bond with the decks. And that's a huge part of this. This is also a bonding exercise for me and the decks that I'm using because it just it's one on one time with them. So that's how I see it. And the other thing that I just want to say is that also I do do, that sounds always weird, I do a, a daily pull and you'll see that on my Insta account. I do very often a daily pull. Well, not very often, I, I do it every day actually. <laughs> and um, I find for me what helps when I do this kind of like the week ahead is that it allows me to, if I have a daily pull, sometimes I really just feel as if it comes back to what this was or it will touch upon this in some ways. It almost as if this covers the, it's kind of like a seabed or a foundation. And then every day there's kind of like touch points that come back to this theme of, am I getting too much, um, you know, uh, absorbed into something that I shouldn't be absorbed into? Am I seeing something in a very romantic way that's not healthy? All of these things will be a part of it. And the daily pools almost, they reflect this in some ways. So that's part of it. And, um, and also the other thing that I do find is that um, if I feel there's something that's lacking clarity in my week, again, this, this, these set of cards just show me, yeah, that this is where it was coming from. So yeah, so I think that this has just been um, great to work with. I do love these decks, by the way. So that was one thing. I was also thinking what other decks um, could be useful in this kind of practice because I always find Sundays I need to have like a calm, centered moment. And then I have that again every morning where I again need that. But Sunday evenings, there's something about wrapping them up that I always find like, okay, we're kind of like at the end of one week going into another. So another set of decks and I pull these out and I thought it might be interesting to see if they work as well in the same way is, let me get, get it. So I have here the Guy and Tarot. This is by Joanna Powell Colbert, artwork and author. And I have here Sacred Destiny Oracle by Denise Lynn. And I can't, I don't know who the name of the artist is. I always find it hard to find the artist for this deck. I never, I think this was this time when they still weren't really listing the artists so well. Yeah, I can't find who the artwork is by. Yeah, sorry, but this is Sacred Destiny by Denise Lynn. So let's see again if this principle works really well with these two decks, because I think it might do. And um, I love Sacred Destiny because 
there's something very visionary about this deck, the way the landscapes are. So let's have a look. It's kind of like landscape energy to walk with you rather than spirit animal energy. So what do I have here? What do we have here? Healing chaos. Wow, now that's strong and powerful. And if I go into the guidebook, let's just quickly look at the guidebook, what it says. Healing chaos. Spiraling tornado. I'm just going to read a little bit. Energy in our universe spirals. Water spirals in the wake of fish that swim through the stream. Air spirals in the wake of a bird in flight. There's moon spirals around the earth, which spirals around the sun, which spirals around the galaxy. Even our DNA is a spiral. It is the healing principle of life. It's not an accident that the ancient symbol for healing is the catechus, two spiraling serpents. It is the, let me just turn, turn the page. It is the sacred spiritual, so okay, sacred spiral, sorry. Most people assume that there is nothing good that comes from tornadoes, but every part of nature has value. And she goes on there, I won't read it all, but that's interesting, it's about this, this sacred spiral that we, we sometimes feel that we're in a chaos, but it's actually a cleansing process. So that's how I'm taking it away. And let's look at the guy in tarot and do a pull for a card. Um, okay, so this is by Joanna Powell Colbert. And I happen to have the Schiffer edition, which is huge. Here we go, so there we go. So, oh, did I do this right? Yeah, okay. So let's pull, I can never shuffle this deck properly because it's just too big for me. Um, but I do like it and I like for some reason keeping it with the silver gilding. Um, let's pull a card and see what we get. Let's see if this works. Oh, I have the, the wheel, I cannot believe it. Talked about spirals and talk about the wheel. So of course we have here the wheel of fortune. We have here um, changes, what goes up will come down, but again, what's also not working for us, there will be a change in pace. It's celebrating the fact that it, life is circular. I mean, just look at the synchronicity of putting those two together, absolutely beautiful and superb. So again, you can use this for journaling for your week ahead, having a calming moment and just going, okay, I know it might be a bit of a messy week, but it's all gonna work out in the end, you know, that's what I feel. So that was another experiment. And now I have a huge mess that's happening here, but let's, let's keep going because I love doing this kind of stuff. And finally, another two decks that I pulled out because I just, I felt the need to like put these combinations together. And I thought I'll share it here in this video. And here it is. Okay, so this, this is, I'm gonna use as an oracle, but it is a tarot deck, but I'm using it as an oracle. Just, it's just the way I feel about this deck. And it is, I should show you the deck, is the El Goliath second edition, El Goliath tarot deck. So let's pull, oh, that took a bit of time. Let's pull, and this, I wanted to choose this because I think sometimes there might be viewers who are like, I need a darker energy. I need something that's a little bit different in how it feels. And, and so I find that the monochrome decks for me work beautifully in that sense. So, um, yeah, so this is the El Goliath. It is an independent deck, an indie pr production. Stunning artwork, beautiful quality. I have absolutely no regrets in this purchase. So, yes, let's pull a card and see what we get for another week ahead reading. Let's just take whatever's at the bottom here of this pack. What do I have here? Oh. What do I have here in terms of animal energy? I have the Queen of Cups, the Matter of Crystals. Interesting. What do I see? Well, she's a bear. Wow. Wow. I see bear energy. I see hope. I see the need to take care of what we, take care of how we feel or who we, I don't know. I just, I, Beautiful. Let me find uh, uh, Queen of Cups. Ah, I'm just going to read a little bit of what El Goliath has written. And we're going to see this as an oracle. Intense emotional capacity, protective, creative, compassion, calm and grounded. Emotional security. Transmutes anger and hate, create creativity, sensitivity to others at all times. 
can develop a telepathic bond with animals. I'm going to take this as really about, this could be the week ahead of just having empathy and understanding and being able to contain my emotions and looking towards the cosmos, the cosmos the way she is as a way to be okay within. I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> to be okay within. Um, this is telling me to tap into my sister energy of cancer, to be okay within and who I am. And, um, and so that's beautiful. And I'm going to pair it with, now I'm pairing it with what I would see as a tarot deck in this. You know, you take it as your own. And I have here, it's, it's such a mess now, Tarot of the Abyss. This is by Anna Turian, a US games deck. So absolutely love this deck. I use this deck a lot. Oh, I just flipped it over and it's come here. It's temperance, look at that. So you have temperance here with the mama bear. Temperance about balancing energies, emotions, alchemical, bringing things together, allowing things to be, and the harmony of whatever's happening, we can find this, this, this interspace. We can find this kind of like energies mixing together and beautifully coming together. I see this cancering energy coming with the beauty of um, this Sagittarian flow, this, this, this feeling of, you know, allowing things to be, of, of journeying within, of just going for the stars. I, that came out of me and then I saw she's looking at this comment. It's just so beautiful how they look. Look at how they also just figuratively just, just yeah, I think there's such a beautiful harmony just right there, just looking at. If I had this sitting on my altar space or, or my, I would call, I call it my shrine because it's a shrine for me. Um, I would just be reminded again of trusting the universe and allowing the emotions to, to be held in a sacred way, um, allowing those cups to mix, but with gentleness and ease and, and knowing that it's done for the right reasons. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna stop there. Let me have a look at my notes before I, before I miss anything and then I will log off for today. Um, you know, for me, this, the, this whole journeying, and have I got anything that I've missed out here? Yeah, this whole this whole path for me is really just about, you know, when you look at your schedule at the week ahead and all the things that are gonna happen, it just gives me the chance to go like, what do I need to really hear for myself this week? What's gonna give me a sense of centering and focus? And I always believe that in the middle of the week, like Thursday happens and the weekend is coming and I've got a whole load of things to do and I'm like, I haven't done half of it. This is when this reminds me like to remember like, you know, moderate or balance or, you know, as we had pulled like, you know, the, the, the wheel of fortune would be saying to me, well, what's, what's not going so well, it will change. You know, we will go around and, you know, this spiral of healing, which I saw from Denise Lynn, you know, or the moth energy, you know, not to be too addicted to something. So, you know, these are just different things that I'm kind of like, doing a conclusion for, but it gives you a taster for why I love doing this on a Sunday and I wanted to share it. And um, before I forget, I know I need to go into more about tarot journaling and how that works with other areas of journaling. Um, I wanna do a separate thing on that, but I'm someone that firmly believes, um, make the journal work for you. Make the journal something that works for you, something that allows you to feel like, you know, I've done enough, um, this feels good enough. I personally, because I do my tarot pull in the morning and then I do separate journaling, I have another journal just where I just write. I just write, 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 and that's something else that I like to do. But um, I like to do the tarot journaling as like a record keeping. I think that's more appropriate for it because then I have this space where I just can see the record of everything that I've, I've done and um, and that gives me yeah, a sense of just um, not being so overwhelmed first in the morning. So I hope this helps and uh, thank you for joining me today and if you like the Solitary Tarot um, series, um, I can think about doing more, maybe they're going to be more Sunday night fillers, um, let's see. But I just, I think this is a great moment for me to just share kind of like um, touching base and, and saying 
Have a lovely week ahead and I will see you in the next few days. Take care now, bye.